Good morning, folks. I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. And today, in our simple camping series, we're going to talk about stakes and staking. And you think that's a very simple subject, but what I see on the internet is that it's not very well covered. And I covered a little bit about staking out tarps or picketing your tarp and things like that in a couple of my books. But I wanted to discuss, number one, the proper way to make a tent stake and the proper materials to use for a tent stake. And then proper ways to stake out or pick at your tarp because I think that's something that has been ignored on bushcraft channels across YouTube. But it's very important to understand for someone who is just trying to go out and learn to camp with a simple tarp and hammock or a tarp and a bedroll. Stay with me and we'll get started. Now this setup at our hunting camp is a simple 10 by 13 Defender tarp with a dream hammock underneath. A very, very good setup. We can add a sleeping foam pad to that, add a sleeping bag, add a wool blanket, whatever we want to to get a good night's sleep. But what we need to understand is the manipulation of this tarp. And the first thing to understand is that we always use a ridge line underneath our tarp. And I see a lot of guys, and this tarp's even got center tie-outs on it, so you can put that ridge line outside your tarp and put the tarp underneath it. I prefer always to have my ridge line under my tarp. And the reason for that is, a, it gives better support of the tarp over its length. B, it gives you something that you can hang apparatus off of underneath your tarp, whether that be a light, a candle lantern, or what have you. You can also hang boots and clothing off of that during the day to let them dry if you need to. There's lots of things you can do utility-wise if that ridge line is underneath the tarp. The other side of that coin, again, is that it doesn't allow the tarp to sag anywhere along its center line because it's fully supported by a tight ridge line. And I think that's important. The other thing that we do with our tarps, or that I always do, is I try to keep a minimum of about 20 foot of a bank line, number 36 bank line, which is a tarred nylon line that's made for fishing. And I try to keep about 25 feet of that on each corner, on all four corners of the tarp. And I can use that to fly the tarp, as in the fashion it's right now in this hunting camp, where it's flying, not touching the ground anywhere, it's flying the tarp over the top of the hammock to give me shade and protection from rain, but it's not going to give you any protection from things going this way, from wind, convection, or driving rains. It's not going to give you protection from that. So you have to be able to manipulate this tarp from where it's at. Now, you can somewhat do that by just dropping the guy lines down on whatever tree you have them tied to, if you have that luxury. Or you can stake the tarp. And the better option, if you're going to drop the tarp down very close to the ground so that you protect yourself all the way on both sides, is to stake the tarp out. In high wind situations, you may want to use two stakes. And we'll talk about double picketing in this video as well. Let's get some stake material and talk about stakes in general. Then we'll talk about how to stake a tarp out correctly using our lines. <clears throat> okay, so let's talk first about the material that we're going to make a tent stake from. We can carry tent stakes into the woods. We carry ABS plastic tent stakes on our website. You can buy aluminum groundhog type stakes very cheaply, even at places like Walmart. You can even get titanium stakes if you just have more money than good sense. But the point is that most of those stakes that you find, and even the ones on our website, are fairly short. So for a temporary camp or a quick up and down or something in a state park, they're probably going to be okay. But if I'm in a hunting camp or I'm out in actual weather that may change quickly and may dictate how hard the wind's blowing my tarp around, I want a good long stake. And for me, I like my stakes to be at least from the crook of my elbow to almost my fingertips. And I like them to be as big around as the base of my thumb, so about an inch. And I want them made out of a green hardwood. These two stakes are both maple, and they're a maple sapling. And... Maple is a long grain hardwood, so it makes a very, very good stake. Again, this stuff is not going to mushroom too bad when you're beating on it to get it in harder ground. It's going to be stable, and it's not going to come out of the ground because of its length. And because it's a hardwood, it's not going to snap off if you trip over or something like that. And it's going to hold well even in inclement weather. And those things are all important. So now, let's talk about how we shape a stake like this and why I cut these stakes the way I did, because I cut them purposely the way they are. And if you notice, both of these have a branch coming out of them toward or at the top. 
and I did that for a reason. I cut them off there because there's going to be a knot in there that's going to make this the top of my stake very, very strong. I don't care about the bottom too much as long as I've got the right diameter. Now, I can carve this down into a point, but that's not necessary either in softer ground. I can just carve it to a wedge, and I can do that quickly with an axe and just cut a 45 on there or a 30 degree angle, and I'll be able to pound it in. The important thing is how we form the top of this stake because any point on this end is going to go into dirt. Okay, so let's talk real quick about the pointed end of the stake first. Again, like I said, I don't have to carve a direct point on this stake. I can just come in here with my ax and cut an angle on this stake, just like that, flip it over, cut a second angle on this side, and another angle on this side, and I've got a three-sided point, and that's going to be plenty for going in the ground. So that I'm good with. Now, the other thing to remember is if you get this thing too pointed, it's just going to roll over on you anyway if you're going into harder ground. So you don't really need a drastic point on that thing. Now let's talk about the other end of our stake. Now to me, this end of our stake is the most important because this is going to support our structure or our shelter. So what I do is, the first thing I do is I come in here and I figure out where I want to put my notch. And I always notch these things so it holds the line better. And I've picked this knot on purpose so I could go right below that knot to make my stake notch. And it's just a seven notch. It's very, very simple. And if we have a folding saw, we can use that. If we have a saw on our multi-tool, we can use that. And I'm going to go right below that knot. And I'm going to cut in about one third of the way into the material. It just needs to be a deep enough notch to really to catch my line. All right. Then I'm going to come in here at about a 45 and I'm going to cut that out with my knife. It's a very, very simple process. Again, this is basic and rudimentary stuff, but some of it is not covered very well on YouTube to be honest with you. Okay. And this notch doesn't have to be perfect by any means. Pretty doesn't hold your line, a good deep notch will. Again, one third of the way through the material is plenty. All right, just like that. And I like mine to be rounded just a little bit. And the reason for that is you don't get hard corners when you round it a little bit. So in other words, I try to dish that over just a shade on both sides so I've got kind of a rounded area there to put my lines in. Now, <clears throat> this is the most important thing. Again, I chose it because it has a knot here. But what I want to do is I want to come up here and I want to cut a similar angle to this on the top of the stake. And the reason I'm doing that is because when I pound on the stake with an ax, this can create a split and drive completely off the material. Now, the chances of it doing that with a knot here are very slim. But if you can't happen to find a knot like I did for two stakes, you may have to use something without a knot and it's very important to cut that off. So just take your knife and put an angle on there very similar to that stake notch, just like this, so that when you pound on it, you're not absorbing any shock into the material above that notch. And then you can come in and just crown the top of that stake and that will keep it from mushrooming out on you or help alleviate that issue of it mushrooming out when you're pounding on the stake itself. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pull this line down to stake our tarp closer to the ground if inclement weather were coming in. So we wanna use a knot that's very simple to get undone. I've used the same trucker's hitch style knot on this that I use on just about everything else wrapped around the fork of a white oak sapling. So all I have to do is pull this knot out and I have a loop on this side that the gathered cordage can fall through. I can pull this knot completely out and take it loose from the tree very, very easily to manipulate the tarp. Now let's talk about getting this thing staked closer to the ground. All right, so once our line is loose, now we have to decide where we want our tarp to be. And if we want it very close to the ground, 
we may have to drop our ridge line a little bit or go in really tight to our hammock. If we want just a few inches off the ground to keep us from driving rain and things like that, then we can easily do that with the line that we have here. And all we need to do is come in here and tie a simple slip knot in here just like this. And we can use that for a stake loop. Now, if we don't want that to go anywhere, then we tie a stop knot right here, right behind it, just like that. And now we have two loops that we can very easily get out of this line. Just by pulling them, they'll both come out. I'm going to try to get a close-up on that to show you what that looks like. Okay, so again, all I did was turn the line over on itself and pulled this loop through the line. And that gives me a slip knot. Now, remember that this is going to pull this direction. So if we want that knot to stay put, all we have to do is come in and do the same thing again on the line behind it, just like this, and that creates a stop knot, okay? And that knot can't go anywhere when it's pulled up into this one. It's stuck. That creates your stop knot. It also gives you a second loop that you can use if you want to put two stakes side by side. But we'll talk more about that in a minute. If we want that undone, all we have to do is pull it, and both of the knots will come out of the line. So again, it's a simple slip knot here, just like this, and that gives us a stake loop. Again, it will continue to slide so we can make it as big as we want to or as small as we want to. And if we want to stop it, we just tie another slip knot in here just like this to give us a stop knot. And we can make that the same size as the other one so that we have two stake loops side by side and neither one of them will slip. And we can also, for security's sake, use both of those loops to put into our stake just like this to pull our tarp tight. Now, the other thing that I see a lot of folks do wrong is positioning of the stake. You want this stake positioned, A, at an angle away from the tarp. But also, if this is the corner of your tarp, you want this facing out this direction at an angle to the center of your tarp. So you're pulling out and you're going in just like this, okay? And that will give you a quick way to put that tarp in. Now, if you want to, you can also take both of these knots out, decide where you're going to tie this tarp down and put a stake in the ground ahead of time. But again, figure out that angle before you put your stake in the ground. Put the notch backwards, put the stake at an angle both this way away from the tarp and this direction so that it's toward the center line of your ridge. All right, I'll show you what that looks like from below here in just a second. Now we can come in and we can actually pound this into the ground with our ax. And now we have a good strong stake that we can wrap line around. Okay, so what I wanted to show you here was this angle. You've got basically the angle of this line going toward the center line of the tarp at an angle this way and then out away from the tarp at an angle this direction. So you've got a compound angle there away from the tarp and away from the center line of the tarp. That's the important thing to understand when you're putting a stake in the ground to hold the corner of a tarp. Now I've always been a big fan of, I don't like to use a hundred different knots. So let's stay with the knots that we use all the time and go with that trucker's hitch, okay? And show you how simple that is. If we pull this down to where we want it and we just come back off of it a little ways just like this and we turn our overhand knot in that, just like this. All right, we can now come around our stake and pull this line that we've got left over into that and create that trucker's hitch right there that's very easy to get undone by just pulling that loop through just like that. We now have a taut line right here and if we want to get that undone, all we have to do is pull it, it all comes loose, all the knots come out, very, very simple. So again, I would just stretch that down to the point I want that tarp and my tarps just right here at the edge of the camera thing here step off of that about a foot come up turn a slip knot in that 
just like we talked about a second ago. And we're going to use that loop from that slip knot is going to be what we're going to use for our trucker's hitch. And we're just coming up here with our slack, pulling it down just like that. And using that same style trucker's hitch that we use for our ridge line for this. It's no different. It's very, very simple. It's very, very effective. It's very quick up and down. You don't need to know a whole lot of knots to get the job done and make things easy on yourself. Again, you could make the stake, make the loop ahead of time, like we talked about. Same trucker's hitch type knot right there. Make another one right behind that as a stopper. That's about the same size. That becomes your stop knot and your stake, and you can pull those over the top just like that. And those will both come undone very easily as well. Now, the other thing I want to show you is a double picket. And a double picket comes in handy in areas where you've got lots and lots of wind. The ground possibly isn't the best. Maybe you've got loose soil and even that foot and a half long stake doesn't hold real well. So you can stake one behind the other to give yourself a little better chance of at least one of the stakes holding and you've got pressure between the two instead of only on the one. All right, so this time we're going to double picket. And a double picket just means we've got two stakes in the ground to evenly distribute the pull of this cordage between two stakes instead of just one for severe inclement weather. And the easiest way I've found to do this is to come up here and tight, pull our tarp line tight, measure back about the thickness of our stake. So we're gonna go about this far back Come in here, turn that same exact loop for that trucker's hitch in there, just like this, and put, you can open that loop up as wide as you want to, to easily put it around this line. And when you pull this down, it's going to tighten your tarp line. It's a drawing type slip knot. And then we're going to just come over here to our other stake. We're going to go behind this one and across, make two wraps around the stake, and then just put a half inch in it just like this all right that's going to give us there's really no tension on this line right now whatsoever and we can just come in here if we want to with security half hitch if we choose to do that now the beauty of this half hitch is that I can pick this string up and pull on it and it will unwrap itself from the stake just like this and come loose and when it comes loose this also pulls loose you saw that line line draw up all by itself just like that so that I can then remove that loop from the stake and then pull it out. So again, very simple. Pull this down to the first stake to where it looks like it's going to be tight. Come up about the thickness of your stake and turn that same slip knot in the line that we use for the trucker's hitch. Just like this. You can make that loop again as big as you want to to make it comfortable to go around that stake. As you draw down on that loop, it's going to tighten your tarp line. Come inside and around the back stake, just like this. Make two wraps around, and then put another loop in the line that creates a half hitch, and draw it down tight, just like that. All right? Now you've got a double picket on the same tarp. And to get that undone, again, it's as simple as drawing the line the opposite direction on the half hitch. We'll unwrap it naturally, just like that. And as soon as it loosens up, this knot will then loosen up because, again, it's a drawing type knot. So you'll be able to just come in and pull that off of your stake, just like this, and pull that knot out. So it makes a very, very simple system for double pickets as well. Alright folks, well, I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters and the Pathfinder School. I appreciate you joining me out here today for another video on our series on simple camping. I appreciate your views, I appreciate your support. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, and for our business, for all of our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends, and I'll be back with another video as soon as I can. Thanks guys.